In the first part of the episode, I talked about the dangers of over-leveraging on your trading account. So now let's take a look at the effects of this on actual trading account data. So as I said, this spreadsheet contains all of the trades executed by one of my own systems in a live account. It covers its entire trading history of over three years. All of the data under the green headings show actual trade data exported straight from the trading platform. The data under the blue headings use identical trade entries and exits. However, here we can adjust the position size of those trades. And then we can see the effects of this on the equity curve shown in the chart with the blue curve. And underneath the chart in red shows the drawdown at all points in the history of the account. So as the equity is making new highs, that's when the red drawdown curve has a value of zero. And whenever the drawdown is in play, this clearly increases. Obviously, the highest peak on this red curve identifies our maximum drawdown in percentage terms. So with the current position sizing you see here, this is approximately 2.3%. In terms of the inputs into the model, I can alter the position sizing multiplier. And this is just a simple metric that determines the position size that will be used for a trade for every £1,000 of equity in the account at that time. So with a value of 0 0.01, if the equity is £5,000 at the time the trade opens, then a position size of 0 0.05 will be used for that trade. And as the equity grows, trades taken towards the end will of course have a much higher position size. And we can also change the starting equity of the account, so I've set that at the moment to £5,000. In addition to being able to see the results on the two charts, we can also see what the compound annual growth rate and the maximum drawdown values are in the summary results section top left. And we can see how these change as the position size changes. It also tells us what profit we would have made in the first year based on the metrics used. So in the model, I can easily alter the aggressiveness of the position sizing strategy by clicking on these two buttons here. And you can see that both charts and the summary result metrics change to represent that new position size. So starting off with our position size of 0 0.01 for every £1,000 of equity in the account, let's now start to increase this and see the effect that it has. As we double the position size, both the compound annual growth rate and the drawdown approximately double in size. So our maximum drawdown has now increased to 4.6%. But the amount we made in the first year has also doubled to about £510. So let's now double the position size multiplier again from 0 0.02 to 0 0.04. And again, we see that there's an approximate doubling in the compound annual growth rate and the maximum drawdown. Notice, however, that the compound annual growth rate increase is just a little bit more than double each time. And this is because of the exponential behaviour here, which is a result of compounding. With maximum drawdown, however, the relationship is much closer to being linear. And you'll find that the behaviour of each of these metrics is always the same, regardless of the type of trading system. So we can actually start to use this model now to determine what our position sizing strategy should be. And that will be based on our own appetite for risk. So for me, I'm relatively conservative, so I like to position size based on a 10% drawdown. Now, I read a lot on the web about traders' tolerance for risk. And there's a lot of people out there saying that they can handle a 30% drawdown. And it's okay saying that while you're not in a drawdown, but when you are there, it feels absolutely terrible. And when I've been in that situation in the past, it really isn't nice. So for me, if I scale my position size to say 10%, and then using the old adage that your biggest drawdown is always ahead of you, I do realize that I might suffer a 15% or even a 20% drawdown in the future. And that I can probably just about handle. And you should also determine your position sizing strategy based on the fact that you probably haven't seen your biggest drawdown yet either. So as you can see here, we've reached the point at which the maximum drawdown is now just over 9%. And so this is in the region that I'd be looking for to use for this strategy. 
And so in this case, this would tell me that 0 0.04 lots per thousand pounds of equity is probably about right. But let's now see what happens when we increase the position size further. We can see now the drawdown start to increase and we're now at 35%, which I believe is probably beyond the tolerance of most traders. At this point, irrational behaviour starts to come into play. As we carry on, the account is eventually destroyed completely. So this is a simple illustration of how a perfectly good system just lost you all of your money because of over leveraging. Now, when I'm developing a new system, this is a process I go through, initially, of course, using backtest data, because for a new system, you don't have anything else to make your decision on. But once I've run a system in a live account for, say, a year, and I've got 500 or 1,000 live trades, I'll then repeat this exercise to reassess what my position sizing strategy should be based on that more reliable real trading data. So let's now ratchet this back to what I said was my level of risk tolerance, as you can see here again. So in the first year, my £5,000 would have made me a nice 21% return. But of course, this equates to just over £1,000 in profit. Not enough to live on, right? But based on this level of risk, let's say that I did have £200,000 in my account at the time. Now I could earn just over £42,000 in profit. And so we're getting a bit closer. But if I don't have that capital available to me, then I can't make a decent living with this kind of system. Even if you have a higher risk tolerance than myself, you'd still need a fairly large starting equity. And remember also that if you're taking money out of your account to live on, you clearly won't be getting that exponential growth in your account. So you'll be struggling to keep your head above water. But as I said earlier, there is a solution to this issue. So click top right here to go to the final part of the episode to find out how.